Riverdale is a weird series on The CW. Over the years, the show has morphed from an average teen drama based upon the Archie comic series to a multi-dimensional and fantasy drama filled with crazy stories and moments. The show has a cult following, but it's all now coming to an end. Recently, one of its stars opened up about the show finally ending. So stay tuned to today's video as we discuss. First up, we have KG Appa on Riverdale's final season. What is happening? It was just recently announced that the next season of Riverdale will in fact be its last, and many fans are sad. Some watch the series with complete confidence at how great it is, and others watch to see the crazy and stupid parts. Riverdale has a mixed fan base, but a fan base nonetheless. It was sad news for many, but these actors need a break from Riverdale. Many of these actors have been on the show since its beginning, and it needs an ending. During a recent recent interview at the CW Upfronts, star KJ Appa, who plays Archie Andrews in the series, spoke about the future of the final season and what might just happen next to wrap up the series. The main thing he wants for his character Archie is some closure, it seems. He wants him to find some peace after everything he has been through the past decade in the show. He knows that something massive is going to happen at the end, but when the dust settles, Archie needs to be okay and have a nice end. He wants Archie to have a family and to live in peace in Riverdale, a simple and normal life, family, wife, kids, and to live in his hometown, his own town. Riverdale has had some crazy storylines and change drastically over the years, from Archie dealing with girl problems to a bear attack to then having superpowers. It's been a lot for the characters and, of course, the actors. Appa spoke about how shit's gone down and that's why it's hard for him to leave the character behind. He can continued to express. To be on a show where you can be attacked by a bear in one scene, I mean, there's going to be no experience like this in my life again, and I know that everyone else knows that. So it's been hard to imagine the unknown after the show ends, and what my life will look like. It'll be sad, but I think exciting at the same time. This season, Betty and Archie are also giving their relationship a real chance. It's been great, Appa shared in regard to finally exploring their dynamic. I've been really enjoying it. I think Lily's great. Who knows what the end game is, but I think Archie especially is enjoying his time with Betty, imagining kids with her, family, and a future. I think at this point, it's her that's holding back a little bit for her own reasons that are valid. The actor also commented on the recent kiss between Veronica and Archie. I don't know what the kiss was all about, he said. I thought that they kind of threw me off guard when I read that scene. I was just like, oh, here we go. They just want to keep something going. I don't think there's anything to it for Archie. For Veronica, maybe not. You never know with her. Finally, Appa wants more scene with his co-star Cole Sprouse, who played Jughead. The two were inseparable in the early seasons, but since the time jump, they have had limited screen time together. He said it's probably because him and Sprouse laugh all the time in every scene the two are in. And that's everything he said about the final season of Riverdale. Hopefully, the final season is good and ends the show off on a nice note. Riverdale has been crazy and deserves to end in a good way. Despite people hating on the series, it somehow kept its audience throughout all this crazy stuff, and it matches the comics correctly. The comic books have seen Archie and the crew deal with zombies, aliens, the Predator, and even the Scooby gang. Riverdale really went there and made a crazy series. What do you think about all of this? Let us know down in the comment section below. And now on to some television news from the past few weeks. Start Starting with how Lucinda Wright updated the Witcher costumes for season 2. To create the right mood and setting for the second season of The Witcher, Lucinda Wright was brought onto the project as the lead costume designer. She added her own spice to the series and created some truly amazing costumes that might just be the best Netflix have ever created. It was her goal to not make it look completely different to the previous season, but she still wanted to add her very own things to make things better for the actors actors and the overall series. As the continuity needed to be carried over from the first season, only subtle changes were added to these new costumes. Lucinda was guided by the scriptwriters and actors to create some of the best costumes that she ever could. Wright went away and came back with the designs we see in the show today, and they are amazing. The main actor himself, Henry Cavill, said that he wanted his costume to feel like a second skin, and that is exactly what she came back with for him. Her 
goal was to make this outfit as light as possible for Cavill, as he was the one with the most screen time and the costume had to be perfect for long shooting days and intensive scenes. The first season suit was amazing, but very heavy on Cavill, and he said the stuff on the suit was cluttering him whilst moving. She removed all the clutter and made it so his scabbard wasn't in the way anymore. The buckle on the side was changed and more were added to give a more detailed look without increasing the weight of Cavill's suit. Clearly, this all worked as Cavill loved his new suit for Geralt and they even made eight in total for filming across the season. When it came down to Yennefer and Ciri's costume, things were obviously much different, as the two mainly wear dresses in the season. Even Yennefer's costume is almost dress-like, with the long coat she wears over her outfit. They were central characters to the main plot, so things had to work out in the costume department. Yennefer has a much softer side in the second season, so her costume reflects that. She has more colors on her suit and even has multiple costumes throughout the series. Series robes were swapped around throughout the series as she begins to train more. Her wardrobe becomes more practical as the show goes on and as her character begins to evolve. Her colors were full of green and brightness, which reflects her character quite well. What do you think about all of these costume changes and how this season played out on the screen? Let us know down in the comment section below. Finally, we have some news on the Witcher spin-off series. Of course, the Witcher fanbase already wants more from the universe and from Netflix in general. But sadly, from what we know, it's going to be a while before we see Blood Origin hit our screens. If you stuck around for the post-credits of The Witcher Season 2, you will have seen the teaser trailer for Blood Origin, but no release date was given. We do know that the series is set to release sometime in 2022, but with no specific date. Fans are even more eager than ever to get one. The cast has also been revealed for the series. Well, a few characters at least. First of all, we have Michelle Yeoh, who is going to play Sian. She is the last member of an elf tribe and is on a mission to take back a certain sword that was taken away from her people in the past. The actress Michelle Teo is most well known for her roles in Legends of Ten Rings, Crouching Tiger, Tomorrow Never Dies, and Hidden Dragon. So you might know her from one of these films. The other actor we have is Sophia Brown as Isle. From what we know, this character will be a warrior of the Queen's Guard. Finally, we also have Lawrence O'Forain as Warrior Fijal. Obviously, we will get more casting details as the months go on, but for now, this is a pretty great cast for the Witcher universe. First of all, this series is being titled as a limited prequel series to The Witcher. As the next series is limited, this means it will only have a set of amount of episodes and only be one season. Netflix has done this in the past and people aren't too keen on it. Many times in the past, we have seen some really cool concepts become limited series and in the end, fans want more. However, Netflix are yet to break this limited series rule, so it looks like Blood Origin will only be six episodes long. This story will tell of how the first Witcher came to be. The spin-off is set around 1,000 years before The Witcher and will really explain the world to people who haven't played the game series. And that's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.